Guys, welcome to another Earthworks Hub uh, live podcast. So today I'm going to do an ad hoc live podcast with a very special gentleman. So we haven't really had that much time to prepare for this. We've, we've sort of decided today, let's do it tonight, and we're doing it. So we're here, we're doing it live. So if we make any mistakes, put up with us. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to post this up afterwards, so uh, there will be an edited version without all the faults in there. But without further ado, I want to introduce to you Alex from ADM Civil and Landscape. <clears throat> Alex, thanks very much for choosing to join us live. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, no worries, man. No worries. As I was just saying earlier, yeah, a lot of a lot of people get nervous about doing the interview in general, but doing it live is just like another thing. So another level. So thanks for doing it, man. Yes, that's all right. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So um, yeah, the sound is all good. Everything seems to be going well with um, the microphones and that, which is a good sign. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So I, I do see on um, Instagram you're in. How do I say that? Is that Warrimu in New South yeah, Wales? I yeah, so I'm, in, I'm from uh, Western Sydney, the Blue Mountains. Um, so most of my work is based in Western Sydney. Um, I work, I work down in the city sometimes, or yeah. go up the coast, or you know, I'd love to go out west wherever the work takes me. But um, yeah, most of my work is in. Uh, I'm based in the Blue Mountains, but most of my work's base is uh, Western Sydney based. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Um, and before we go further, what does ADM actually stand for? Oh, it's nothing special. It's just my initials. Oh. Alexander, <laughs> David McBride. Oh, nothing too fancy. It, it, trying to think of a business name was one of the hardest challenges, and I just gave up everything I wanted. To, everything I thought was really good yeah. was taken, and I was just like, I just gave up. So I was like, ADM, that'll do. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah, you know what? It makes it easier to remember as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's it that's it and then yeah judging by the name you do what civil and landscape work so tell us a bit about yeah your company and um how, what you actually do so um mate i do everything so i am a civil landscaper by trade i started off doing residential uh, a bit of high-end stuff and then got into um the commercial side which is just the best um i used to work for a big uh, company out here, Greater West Landscapes. Um, worked my way through the ranks there. Started as an operator. I've been operating for eighteen years. I started in I think two thousand six, just banging around on little bobcats and dingoes, and then here I am now. So um, that's how I got on the machines. But I started working for a, a big landscaper oh, about I don't know eight years ago, and big. Uh, Got into the commercial side of landscaping and absolutely loved it. It's a bit of everything. I've done sports fields, uh, playgrounds, parks, skate parks. You know, it's just the best. And it's that stuff's super rewarding because when you're doing stuff like that, you, you know, you're building it for families and uh, kids and, you know, people to go and enjoy. So, yeah, it's super rewarding work. And it's super challenging with the, the playgrounds and parks there to the millimetre. You know, if it's not right, falls not right, you rip it out, do it again. Uh, haven't been lucky that it hasn't happened on my job, but I've seen it happen on other other jobs, and it's uh, yeah, not too too fun. So keep on your toes, but it's super rewarding work, and I love doing it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hear you, man, because I I do I did a lot of uh, commercial landscaping, um, mm -hmm. especially toward towards uh, the last few years. So. We did all the same thing, a lot of streetscapes, um, you know, nature strips, um, yeah. all the bollards, the trees, and then all the parks and all that stuff. And it is, it's rewarding, yeah, you're right. And you get to, and what I like about it is that you get to be in different machines. So I used to have a, a the Posi Track and Five Ton combo with them hmm. and the tipper. And um, yeah, I, I was able to sort of rotate and go through the different machines. So I wasn't stuck in the one all the time. Is that is that sort of what you do as well? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to get out of the machines and it's it's nice to have a bit of a break from them. I've got a five-tonner and a bogey um, that I do uh, a lot of combo work with that, um, which is good, but I'm happy to jump in anything bigger and anything smaller yeah. or just beat me on the ground. Um, yeah, running jobs, uh, that's probably my favourite thing is putting it all yeah. together. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, cool. So what you actually... So so do you work for a larger company? Is that what you're saying? And then you just like sub to them or is that how it works? Yeah, so, yeah, so I got my start... When I started my business, um, uh, I had a hard time getting finance for a machine and I ended up subcontracting to a, um, a bigger company called Rhombus Civil and Landscape um, and as a foreman. And I built a skate park with them and a big playground and uh, two, two playgrounds and a skate park for them. And I managed the job and, um, yeah, and, you know, plenty of times and machines, building rock walls, playgrounds, you know, overseeing concrete go in, spraying concrete, building, shaping the skate park myself. And, yeah, that, yeah, so it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. There is Romba's actually come on there. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Romba, Romba is the reason that I I'm still going. They, they, they help me out every day, and yeah, if, if you're going to follow anyone, follow Romba because they're um, yeah, they're the best. Um, they do a lot of sports fields and stuff, and I've had a bit of a dabble in that, and you know, had a go at the GPS on on the Greater Blade, and yeah, they're really awesome. Yeah. Anyway. No. Oh, good, good, man. Now, I did. I noticed um because I was looking at your um at your Instagram profile recently, and then I noticed that you had them uh, hashtagged a lot. So I knew yeah. I knew you must have something to do with them. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what what equipment have you got? So you see, you got a five tonner, and a, we you call them bogies, we call them tandems here. Oh. So um, oh, okay. it's yeah, something different, but uh, it's same same thing, I suppose. But um, what do you what do you actually have? What brands have you got? Uh, um, so cat, um, I've got a cat 305E, 305.5. Um, it was my dream machine that when that came out 10 years ago and I actually have it now. So, um, I, like I love seeing it every day. Like the new 306s are amazing and I'm, you know, it's my next machine on the bucket list, but, uh, yeah, I love, love my little five tonner and, um, I've got a Hino 700, uh, FS. So the bigger horsepower Hino um, does exactly what I needed to do. Tips dirt. Yep. Drives. Yeah. That's perfect. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Very good. Have you had anything else like before that? Is that your only setup you've had or have you had other things in the past? Yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm, that's it. Yeah. Just that in the ute and now I'm just trying to uh, grow from here. So, yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. Someone's asking, I just had a question there from someone. Uh, are you using any technology yourself? Uh, that was from Jenna Troy. Is that on the? Do they mean like um, in the machine, or do they mean maybe they can confirm like GPS or something or a rover? I don't know. Oh, you could, well, what about that? Answering it in both ways, I suppose. What technology do you use? Uh, uh, just a just a laser at the moment. Uh, dual grade laser is all I've got. But um, definitely looking to get some. Um, uh, well, the new 306s, which I'm looking at getting one next year, um, they've got a, uh, an inbuilt 2D system. Yeah. So yeah. I'll probably be going for that. It's a big extra, but it's uh, so it'd be so handy just to be able to, you know, benchmark yourself and then dig a pad or do whatever you got to do. Um, yeah. I would like to look into getting like a, a Rover next year. You know, so I'm, this year I'm just pretty pretty packed out but next year will be the the money spending yeah. so uh probably getting looking to uh investing to maybe a rover um or maybe uts uh in the future yeah so definitely like after using it in a posi it, and setting out I, I set out a whole skate park with a uts and what they can do is incredible so yeah 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 it's true. It's true. All the um, all the landscaping companies I worked for also just had the rovers walked around, set all the heights for me, set all the um, you know, where all all the boundaries and stuff. And it's just so much easier having that. So I think you're right. Technology is the way to go. I've got Matt Agridig. We've got people from the other side of the world. Matt, welcome as well. <laughs> Matt from the UK. I had him on. Uh, I don't know if you listen to some of the older episodes, but Matt is from Wales in the UK. Yeah. And I had him. I had him on as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard him. yeah. That's it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, uh, yeah, UTS and things like that, it's just going to be um, like the norm eventually. Yeah. I'm dying to get ahead of it, ahead of the trend. So I'm 
looking to invest in that uh, as soon as I have the money to do so. Uh, yeah. As you know, it's not cheap. So it is. It is. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is costly. Yeah. I am. I am hearing though, like um, places like that or companies like Uni Control and that they're all, they're all bringing out these systems that are a bit more affordable now. Mm. Um, so maybe that maybe that means it's the more companies that are sort of coming out means that price is going to come down. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. I'll definitely be keen. Uh, I know Topcon just bought a brand new uh, base model out uh, the last couple of days and I'm pretty keen to check that out and see what that can do. And um, Sorry, when I say that, are you, base model uh, UTS, sort of like a more beginner one. Not yep. beginner, you know, <clears throat> not as... Yeah, like a basic... The, the bigger ones. Yeah. yeah. That'll yeah. do me, you know. I don't need to be. I'm not building skyscrapers. So yeah, yeah, true, me, yeah. true, true, true. So w- with your company, so ADM Civil, is it just so it's just yourself from what I gather? Have you got any employees or have you ever ever had any? No, no employees yet. Um, I subcontract a lot of guys in to give me hands when I need to. Um, whether that's truck drivers, concreters, other landscapers, uh, other machine operators. Um, uh, I'm just not at the stage yet where I'm ready to put someone on because I'm not like I don't know if I want to put a landscaper on or chuck someone in the machine and then I go on landscape because um, my heart's in landscaping and you know and I love the machines as well. It's it's sort of in both, so I'm sort of torn. Like what do I want to what do I want to be doing? Driving the diggers or uh, building building parks? So yeah, yeah. Have you have you ever like quoted any yourself like from? You know, like any jobs yourself, or do you mainly just do sort of early hire? And like... uh, I do plenty of residential quoting. Um, yeah, when I started my business two years ago, my five year plan was to have a park uh, completely built by me, the whole whole thing, and that's my five year goal. And I'm, I'm sort of working towards that, so I'll have to get definitely a few more people under my belt before I can really make that happen. But uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you know what? It's good that you've given yourself a, a five-year goal. That's yeah. one thing a lot of people don't do is actually sit down and write down some goals, because um, I think it's important. I'm, I remember one year I wrote, I sat down and wrote some goals for the whole year, and I actually uh, because I knew what I wanted to do then, I actually achieved all of them within less than a year. And then the next year, I didn't put any goals together, and I felt like I was just floating along, like I was just letting customers call me and I was just sort of going with the flow rather than actually going in any set direction. You know what I mean? So I yeah. felt to be lost. <laughs> oh, um, it's, it's easy to feel lost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, that's good. So you've got the machines. Uh, so most of your work seems to be you know, like landscaping. And that. I noticed you did do some civil works. Or is that part of the landscaping, all that full path and that that I saw? Oh, yeah, that's part, part and parcel. That's another contractor I work for. They just bash out thousands of squares a day of uh, footpath and I just go and rip it up for them. So yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's good fun work. Um, if you just, you know, chuck your Netflix on or put a podcast in on and you just go for the day and it's, it's a nice cruisy, cru- cruisy day. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I've got Matt's asking if we've got iDig over here. We do. We do have iDig. Um, I've never used it, but I know a couple of guys that do use that. Um, have you ever, have you used that at all, Alex, or not? Uh, I've seen it at the Diesel Dirt and Turf Expo. Um, I think it'd be really great if you could have it. If you know, definitely um, be able to just anything that you can just set your bench without having to get out of your machine and you can just go dig, mate. That'd be unreal. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've quoted it up and I've, I've thought about it. Just uh, I'll maybe just waiting for the next machine to come along. Yeah, I suppose you can. That. Yeah, incorporated in that cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than when you're doing the job on by yourself, and you got to get get out, check the laser, come back, jump in, and then you f- go back out, check it again. The pain in the ass, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. If you're bashing yeah. a full path or something, uh, you just bench off the, you bench off the curb, go go and don't have to move. Yeah, out yeah. Of the seat all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So true. So true. So what I might do just to make things a bit interesting. Um, I'm going to try something different with this uh, episode. If I can just find my document here, I'm going to do a little quick uh, 10 question sort of survey, and that will help viewers get to know you a bit better as well. 
and then um, you know, have a bit of fun as well at the same time. So yeah. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. So you, I don't know if you're prepared for some of these. So just just say whatever you whatever you want, man. Um, oh, are you ready for it? Yeah, go for it. All right. So, so what is your favorite piece of equipment or machine? So uh, it doesn't have to be just machines, but it could be anything, equipment, that, tools. Had to be my digger. Oh, I just I've have I've wanted it for ten years. I got it two years ago, and I love seeing it every hour. So every hour I click over, is I've got a smile on my face. Yeah. Even when a hose blows or it breaks down, <laughs> I still I just love it. So yeah. Oh, oh good man, good. Yeah. Um, now, what is your favourite movie or, or TV show? Um, a bit of kid, a bit of a kid at heart. Uh, favorite TV show is definitely Futurama. Uh, <laughs> might be a bit, <laughs> a bit controversial for all the Simpsons fans, but I don't know. I've always loved it. <laughs> I've always stuck through. Yeah, true, man. True. Yeah, no, I do. I used to watch a bit of that yeah. myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Now, with the kids and that, I always watch all their stuff most of the time, so I don't get to watch anything. It's either what they want or, or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, no, cool. What uh, what are your hobbies? So, what do you do like out, out of apart from work? Um, big time skateboarder. So, um, I've been skateboarding for I don't know tw- over 20, 25 years. So, I just I don't go hard or anything like I used to, but just rolling around is just that's my favorite thing to do is just get on the board and go down to the local park and all the park I built and just go roll around and. I always put a smile on my face. Cool, man. Hey, do you go like, <laughs> yeah, Terry Pro is loving that. He's a, he's a skater <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember listening to him. I thought he'd like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, can you like go up on the ramps and that? Do you do like jumps off the, you know, the like the uh, half pipes and that? Do you actually, can <laughs> yeah. you go that far? Yeah, so there's a big bowl down at Bondi um, and I was skating in it and I used to, go there like twice a week and i'm from the mountain so it's like a two-hour drive in a train ride in or drive in it's just the worst place to get to from the mountains and i just absolutely cooked myself in it one day and broke my collarbone and (laughs) called the ambulance and the um, bondi rescue crew came over and shoved a camera in my face straight after they gave me the green whistle and i was just cooked it never made it to air but i've got a Oh, I've got photos of me with the camera in my face just oh. absolutely cooked. Yeah. So you could have been on Bondi Rescue. I, there you go. Could have been, yeah. <laughs> been the fame. Oh man. Oh cool, that's cool. I always uh tried I tried um skating and that and I can't even do an Ollie after all those years. Can't do anything. Just just simple uh the crab walk. I think that's the only thing I can do. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, the crab walk, isn't it? Yeah, crab walk, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only thing I can probably do, man. <laughs> uh, Terra Pro saying it was the Fitzy Bowls for me. I think it means, is it Fitzroy? It must be Fitzroy. There you go. That's in Melbourne. Yeah, no. That's in Melbourne, oh, in Melbourne. yeah. Oh, it must be. Yeah, he'd know Bondi, you... though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Then. Yeah, he would, yeah. Oh, cool, man. There you go. See, it's something we don't know about you. Uh, so that's your hobby. So what is your favorite holiday destination? So whether you've been there or haven't been there, so what would be your favourite? Uh, either the snow, anywhere with if you go snowboarding, or favourite holiday destination. I don't, I, I don't even know. Maybe out west camping, or just down at the snow. Yeah, probably the snow. Yeah, probably the snow. Anywhere the yeah. snow. Have you been like to like out of Australia to snow? Like a lot of people go to New Zealand and that. No, I've never been that lucky. No. Uh, I've got four four snowboards at home, ready to go. Pack them all up, but I just never been. I need to go to New Zealand. Uh, go to the snow over there. Yeah, apparently a lot of people go there because it's supposed to be really awesome. Yeah, mm. there you go. All right, so we'll say anywhere that there's snow. Uh, who is an idol or a mentor or someone that you look up to? I saw this question when you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Just to think. laughs> Yeah. Um, what about someone, anyone, any, even like a, you know, like a celebrity or I don't know, anyone, anyone that you sort of look up to? Oh, oh mate, I'm actually drawing a blank. <laughs> you know what we'll do? We'll skip that one. Yeah. We'll come back. We'll come back to it. You might think of it as we go. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite car brand? Uh, Aston oh. Martin. Aston Martin. Yeah. Like a DB9 or something like that? Or? DBS. 
Well, the new Vanquish just looks pretty sweet. The Vanquish, yeah. yes, yeah, I do. I like, I like, yeah. <laughs> no, good, good choice, man. I like it. Um, you haven't got any any like toy cars or anything? Nah, no, nah, just my my diggers, my <laughs> my, my digger, and my truck is all like, <laughs> yeah. They they keep there. <laughs> they're, they're my toys. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um. Are you a shoes on in your cabin or a shoes off person? Like, do you keep it so neat you have to take your shoes off, or do you just jump in? Uh, I, I keep it pretty neat, um, but in a five ton, you can't. You know, just like I, I wish I could. You know, some days it's pretty clean, um, but a lot of the time, no, nah, it's doors open, dust dust is coming in. Uh, I try to brush it out. You know, I've got my own little brush in there and brush it out every day, but. Uh, I've driven with my boots off in the socks and it's an amazing feeling, but I, I just, I'm not always that lucky. So yeah. 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 I, th- I feel like, um, with landscaping as well, that's what I found. You're constantly in and out. Someone's on the rake, yeah. you're doing stuff, you're moving. So you yeah. can't constantly put your shoes on, off, on, off. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And you know what? I used to get bagged for having my window open sometimes or the door, but, um, I think with a five tonner, a lot of times you're taking instructions, yeah. So you're trying to like listen, and it's easier just to have the window open and, and listen to what they're saying. Yeah, is yeah. that what you find? Oh yeah, if you got a spot over there, you got to have yeah, you got to have your door open, tunes off, ear, ear pods out. You know, you got to you got to be paying attention. You, gotta, you have to do the right thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. True. All right. So you're a shoes on person. You're like me then. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was. You know, when I get a thirteen or a fourteen, I'll might be shoes off but not yeah. at the moment no that's fair enough um what type of music do you listen to uh, um i'm an old school punk rock kid um yeah just punk rock that's my that's always been my thing friends yeah. are wrong for all the oldies out there um <laughs> that, that that's always been my favorite band and yeah you know, music that doesn't go to take itself too seriously yeah. Yeah, must be a, it must be a skater thing. Is that because the skate thing goes yeah, with it? Prob- probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go, man. And you mentioned earlier about podcasts, uh, like listening to them in the cab. What do you prefer? Do you what do you listen to more, podcasts or music while you're working? Oh, uh, podcasts. Um, yeah, podcasts every day. Um, just almost through Earthworks Hub. And yeah. almost up to date with Earth, Earthworks Hub, but um, yeah, Hamish and Andy or crime or history, anything, um, anything that can make my brain still think while I'm digging away. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's true, and it doesn't have to be always Earthworks related. Yeah, I know a lot of guys that listen to crime and history and stuff. Well, yeah, just yeah. keeps them keeps them going. You know. Yeah. No. Awesome. That's good. That's good. So I think a lot of people will resonate with this stuff. So that's why I thought I'll introduce these questions. Eh? Mm. Um, and the last one is, if you couldn't do what you're doing now, what else would you be doing as a job? Like what else would you, can you be doing? Oh, I would have been an international spy on my Aston Martin, mate. Yeah. No. <laughs> James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was, uh, man. Yeah. I was going to be it and then I, 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 love, I love digging too much. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I um, I went to uni when I got out of high school. Always wanted to be a radio, radiologist. Um, because I used to break bones and stuff all the time, and I was fascinated <laughs> by X-rays. And but, you know, it doesn't. Nothing really tickles my interest as much as landscaping and just draw, you know machines and earthwork, earth moving and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. It's good. Oh, well, it means you love you love the industry that much. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome, man. No, thank you. That was it. That was it. That was just uh, just ten questions mm. to get to know you a bit better. Um. So hopefully everyone got something out of that. Someone wrote, "You all punks are not dead." There you go. So somebody else is resonating with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Before we continue on, I just have to do a quick shout out to all my sponsors. Um. So that is, and I'll do it in reverse order because I always go the other way around. Uh, Earth Moving Warehouse, Goddings, Digger, Digger Lid, uh, JR Safety Co., Next Gen Landscaping, uh, and Earthworks, Spartan Machinery, Melbourne Tractors, the Bolly Group. So the Bolly Group have given me a jersey to wear, um, and Network Finance. So uh, 
It's funny because I was, I was, I'm actually working for the Bolly group this week and you probably saw the post of me breaking their Komatsu. Mm. So I laughed and like, he just gave me the jumper like literally half an hour before that happened. I didn't even have the tag off it yet and I said, when I broke it, I said, do you want me to just give the jumper back, man, and just <laughs> pack up? And he started laughing. He goes, no, no, keep it, man, keep it. But um, yeah, I can't believe that, man, that breakdown. I can't believe it. Um, uh, I, don't feel, I don't feel as bad because I know that it's happened before. So obviously it's a weak spot on there. But it's just a it's a bad feeling, man. I hate I hate that. Have you had any big sort of breakdowns as well? Uh, um yeah. So, so my hydraulic coupler blew the other day, got stuck on the road three o'clock on a Friday, just had to skull drag it off this, to the side, which was fun. Oh. Um I've snapped the top of two dipper arms. Um yeah. just not snapped, I've cracked them. Um, is that just, is that with with the ram hold? With what holds the ram? Yeah, Where the ram pin go through. Yeah. yeah, that's common, man. That's common, especially on the five ton. It's very common. And a lot of them will have a hole there, and it's just it's always where they just go, and it's yeah. just a killer. Like my machine's got that, so I'm yeah. always checking it. Because um, when I, I cracked it on the same machine, um, but but not that one. It was just fatigued. Eight thousand hours on the machine, and it just it just went. It was added. Had an extended dipper arm and a 1500 bucket on a five tonner. It was just a five tonner trying to be an eight tonner and it just went after so long. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. The 1500 bucket. That's why um, one of my machines, I think it was the Cabalco SK50, I had a five tonner, Cabalco, and they had a 1500 bucket on it. And that's the one that snapped on the top. Yeah. Um, and. Also, what I found was, yeah, the, the machine would, like, you'd lift up too much material with it and you'd almost tip over. So from now, from then on, every five tonner, I just had a 1,200 bucket on it, never, never, nothing bigger. Um, yeah, I've got a 1,200 and, yeah, I won't go anything bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I agree, man. I agree. Um, all right, so uh, so you, how long did you say you had the business for? So you've been in it for, like, what did you say, 18 years or whatever, but what about oh, the actual business? Oh, I've been Driving machines for about 18 years, but I've been uh, two years ago, I started the business. Oh, you, you uh, did say that. Yeah. Could, yeah. 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 Hey, what's, yeah. What's JST? JST Excavation is saying, good to get inside the heads of one of the goats. Cheers, lad. <laughs> he's one of my mates. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's, um, he's going to be on in a couple of weeks. Is he? <laughs> no, uh-huh. he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a weapon operator as well. Good yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go, man. Yeah. There you go, JST, man. Oh, thank you for the uh, for the comments <laughs> <laughs> for the goats. I love it. <laughs> oh, no, nah, good, good. All right, so you've been in it for two years. Mm. Um, so that means were you start doing that during COVID or was that after COVID you started? Post COVID. Post COVID. Post COVID. Yeah. Right. Because I, I was going to ask you how how you travelled through through COVID. How did you travel through that? How'd you go with it? Um. We definitely had it better than what Melbourne did, which was good. But we got the we got a two week lockdown. Um, I was on this big, big uh, parkland job, and we had oh about ten bits of plant. And they I can't even they 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 gave us like twenty four hours notice that they were going to shut the state down. I can't remember exactly, but they they they, they said they were going to shut it down. And you know, on a Sunday, everyone rushed out to take everything, float everything away and lock up everything, get everything out of the containers and, you know, that was it. But, you know, wearing masks was a killer. Um, yeah, it was pretty pretty rough. Don't want to go back. Yeah. For sure. No. I think the only thing that I liked about COVID was that uh, there was less traffic on the road. So that oh. was one good thing for us. Because yeah. <laughs> I've noticed yeah. it's... It's gone back to crazy now. Like it's ridiculous on the roads. I don't know why, but it's just gone nuts. Yeah. Recently, I've noticed it a lot more. But yeah, that was my favourite thing, man. Just less cars on the road. Oh, I agree, I agree with you. Working in town, just you know, you, you you leave at your normal time, and you you rock up half an hour early. And you're like, why am I here so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I de- definitely hear you, man. I definitely hear you. Um, what about maintenance and that? So, do you? What do you do? Do you get someone to fix it all for you, or do you do some of it yourself? Uh, um, I've got a me- really, really good mechanic. Um, I, he does. I've got a really good truck mechanic, and I've got a really good excavator mechanic, and 
type mechanic and I'm on it every 250 hours, every 10,000 Ks, everything gets serviced. Um, I'm, I'm not so mechanically minded. Like I, I'm pretty, I'm all right, but I'm not good enough to be able to uh, take it into my own hands. And, you know, I trust my mechanic and, you know, he gets, gives me the report every time. So when I get asked, hop on a job and they ask me for, um, uh, service history, I've got it all. So yeah. 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 I'll get under and grease the truck and I'll make sure it's all tidy, but that's uh, about where I stop. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. And look, that's, that's fair enough. You know, a lot of people don't, don't, um, I suppose are not interested in knowing all the mechanicals and that, and, um, they're not phased by just paying the mechanic. Cause a lot of people think they're saving money by doing it themselves. Um, which you probably can, but then um, yeah. Yeah, there's advantages as well. Yeah, if the mechanic might see things you don't see, and and you know do yeah. do a, do a bit more of a thorough job. Maybe, hopefully, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at sitting in the seat and pulling the levers. I'm not as good fixing it, and I'll admit that. You know, like a, yeah. yeah, it's just one of, not my strong strong point. Yeah, yeah, I'm not as good as I could. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know what? It's 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 fine. I suppose you know what? I I had a crash course in 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 learning how to fix things because um there was a stage where I had a few machines going and then I didn't have time to wait for mechanics, so I just had to try and just work it out myself. And lucky I, I mingle with cars a bit, and, you know, meddle with cars and do things. So I had some mechanical knowledge, but yeah, when it gets a bit too detailed, I'm the same man. I just give it to them, you know. And time wise, yeah, like I think I'd rather sometimes just pay it and then I can just go and go home and see my family rather than stay there till eight o'clock at night doing stuff. Yeah. 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 So um what about so I was gonna ask you about chasing payment and that, but obviously I don't know, are you have you ever had to chase payments and that or had any issues with that and what have you done? Um I've always been paid. Sometimes it's later than normal. Um but I I've I've been pretty lucky. I've only been in it for two years. Um, everyone's had stories of how they've been burnt or they've, you know, oh, they're, this guy's not paying or I can't, I can't get any money out of them or they're paying, you know, 30 days, 60 days. I've been pretty fortunate. Um, we're getting paid compared to a lot of guys out there. So uh, touch on wood, it'll stay like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I have been pretty fortunate. I've got a lot of mates out there. You know, I was talking to a guy the other day who, you know, someone went under, they, you know, they'll be used as a bank and they were down a hundred grand and that kind of stuff scares me. So I try to keep everything as, you know, my terms as short as possible. So, yeah. 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 Especially now when it's a bit quieter and I'm hearing a lot of stories of like people going under and stuff. So now, now is probably the most important time to make sure you get paid, you know, and, and really, really make sure that you know who your customers are you know, yeah. before you actually go and do work for them. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. it? I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty particular with who I work for. Like I've, I've got a small, pretty small network with, of guys. I, you know, I, I get recommended or, I, you know, everyone's got references and everyone knows each other up here and um, everyone's pretty good that I've worked for. And um, when I do residential jobs, uh, I'm really a bit more vigilant. I've had a few uh, nightmare clients and you know, I'm pretty good at scanning them now and yeah. I'd rather just say no to a headache than, uh, than yes. So, Yeah, yeah, true. What's it like at the moment, like in New South Wales? Because I know here it's it's really, really quiet. However, I have to admit recently we've, I've had a little bit of a spike where people are starting to call again and that, but... It's been really, really quiet, and a lot of guys are saying like they're struggling and people looking for work. How how is it there? Um, oh, that breaks my heart hearing that down there. Um, we're pretty lucky, so we've got a big airport going in in Western Sydney that they've been talking about for fifty years, and they're finally starting to build it. The Batteries Creek Western Sydney Airport that'll be built in. I think first plane's going off in twenty twenty six. Or maybe next year, I don't know. But yeah. that's just it, you know, just the hub for that and all the infrastructure to get there, the train lines that are going in, all the bus, you know, all the widings of all the roads. It's this that's taken up a lot of resources. So, and, and that just funnels out everywhere. Subdivisions going up left, right, and center. 
even with house prices going up, there, there seems to still be plenty of houses being sold and plenty of lots being sold up here um, that I've seen. That's, uh, but yeah, we've been pretty lucky uh, up here because of that. Um, and it, that, that, that kind of big stuff really does trickle down to the smaller guys like me. We can still get out there and make a, make a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to hear because I, I am. I'm hearing um, through all my other live sessions that a lot of a lot of the other states are still doing quite well. So it seems to be just mm. more Victoria. We're, co- we're copying it definitely. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see. Um, even on all of, all the Facebook groups and you know, there's people always advertising, looking, looking, um, saying that they're available for work. Machines, machines are up for hire. People are renting their machines at the moment just to keep them moving. So yeah. I noticed a lot of that, and a lot, of, a lot of people looking for work. So a lot of companies are obviously mm. getting rid of people. Yeah, oh, look, there's, there's parts in Sydney that are like that as well. Um, I've had weeks where you know you call everyone, oh no, I've got nothing, and then the next week, if find us to bring, you could have ten machines. Um, so yeah, it's, but it, it, I, I found it more busy than not busy. Yeah. 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 And what about, so how do you go about finding work for yourself? So what do you do to get keep yourself getting work? Um, I've got my network of uh, other machine operators. Um, you know, oh, how are you guys going? Do they need other operators? Just communicating with other guys and seeing what's going on because they're the guys you can really trust. You know, oh, I'm working on this job, but it's, it's, you know, they're, they're slow payers or, you know, it's going to end soon or yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, or I've got, I don't know, I've just got my little network yeah. uh, that I've worked really hard to, to gain. And, um, they're, they're so what, you just you, you just feed each other work, is it? Like if they can't do something or what, yeah. what they hear about something coming up? Yeah, well, they're, or, you know, whoever they're contracting to might need more guys or, or whatever, you you know, with the machine yeah. stuff, that just floats away and I'm trying to pick up a bit more of my own uh, work. So I'm not just doing hourly hire. Uh, the hourly hire stuff's great, but um, it's definitely more... Uh, probably a bit more interested in doing the, the jobs that I can put my whole name to. Yeah, like, like quote, quote the whole thing then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you think that... Um... Do you think that it's better to do that, like to, to like go for quoted jobs rather than hourly? Like, what advice would you give to people? Oh, I like the challenge. Um, I like the challenge of doing all of that. Uh, eventually, I'll have to, you know, if I do grow, I'll have to put an estimator on. They can quote the jobs and all that kind of stuff. But I do like the challenge of, you know, using my, like like I can sit in the machine, I can operate, I can I can trim, I can do anything I need to do on a machine. Um, I'm pretty confident on that. I'm, I'm not going to be the world's best operator. I don't care about that, but I can do what I need to do on a machine. Yeah. Um, and I'll, now I like the challenge of, you know, I really want to, you know, build some really cool stuff. And yeah, that that's more what I really enjoy. Yeah. Doing. yeah. So, yeah. so at the moment you, you, you're saying that in the future, you know, if you grew, you'd have to get an estimator. So do you do all your own sort of paperwork and that as well then? I gather you do all your invoicing, quoting, everything. Yeah, do all my own invoicing, quoting. Got a really good, I've got a really good accountant. Um, he does all my book work. He's, I think he was, he, he was on here before, but yeah, yeah he, he does all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it's good having uh, people who can do that kind of stuff. Like, like the mechanic, like I, I could probably work out how to maintain my machine. I wouldn't be the best at it. I could work out how to do my accounting, but I wouldn't be the best at it. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll love to let go of a bit of that kind of control, uh, so I can focus on what I'm really good at. Yeah, yeah. Leave it to the experts. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to let go. Like sometimes I'm the same as you. Like it took me a while to realize that. It's better off just let the guys let them do it because they're the experts of that. I just keep digging. That's my that's my expertise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, stick to what I know. Yeah. I challenge myself no. in other ways. So yeah. True. True. What about attachments and that? Like, what attachments have you used? 
Um, I've used a lot um, on the posi. Um, obviously, bucket forks. Uh, spend a little bit of time on a grader blade. Love to spend more on a box grader. Um, that was really great. Uh, trimming up a couple of sports fields. Um, on the machine, on I've used forestry mowers on excavators and uh, posies. I've used um, I've used most attachments. I think rock, rock saw is probably my favourite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, augers, hammers, all that kind of yeah stuff. I love yeah grads and all that kind of stuff. But probably the either the forestry mowers or a rock saw would be more. Yeah, they'd be the more, most exciting things for me. That, oh, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, which one's your your, your most favourite? So you, you say uh, rock rock saw. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't used one, and I think at one of the jobs we're doing, I think a rock saw probably would have been handy, just to like just cut things up before we actually start ripping it all up. Is that what do you actually what have you used it for? Um, I've used it for cutting logs, um, cutting rock. Uh, um, I guess that's what you use for. Uh, mostly just sandstone. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've never cut a face of a wall with one. I'd love to do that. Um, see how good you can get it without getting yeah. marks, sore, sore, sore marks everywhere. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, you sit in the cab and you just watch it go and just be steady with it. Um, yeah, yeah, quite. Yeah, I like anything that I can be really detailed with. So yeah. Yeah, I quite like the, the saw for that. Yeah, have you ever used the vibe plate? I remember once um, I yeah. worked for for a, a landscaping mob, and we were doing like a, a slide that was going to be in the park for kids, but it was like a concrete slide. It was going to be made of concrete, so they wanted me to use the uh, the vibe plate on my five tonner to to vibe all the rock in. Yep. You know, I mean, get it ready for the for the formwork. Oh, that was interesting. Trying to bloody vibe going up up the slope. I tell you what, it wasn't every time you get up to the top, starts vibing, all the rock just comes back down. <laughs> well, I've, I've, yeah, I've, I've yeah, I've used vibe plates for doing that. Um, compaction wheel definitely works better on clay, but uh, which we've got a lot of we've got so much clay in Western Sydney, so um, that definitely works. But uh, the vibe plates are also good. Uh, I've I've done a lot of shaping, like I've shaped a lot of mounds. I had it when I shaped the skate park that I built. I've had it when I've shaped exactly what you said. I shaped yeah. a slide with one, a uh, big on the side of a mound. Um, it was like two stories high. Shaped the whole thing with a, a vibe plate and then trimmed it all off. It, it was really good. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. quite like them. Oh, awesome, man! And you said you said you use like a bobcat or a posi track, and that have you considered like getting one for yourself, or what do you do? Just hire one in when you need it, or? Uh, um, yeah, I want to get one of the new. Oh, look, I'm a bit of a cat man, so I yeah. want to get it probably either new two five five or the two six five. Um, they had a demo day up here yesterday uh, at my local dealer, and I I was too busy on the ground to go, so I missed out. But um, I either want want to get one of those or the the new two eight five, just a real beast of a machine. Yeah, um, get a forestry mower and go play down some bush yeah true yeah yeah true in the bush mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did uh, I, I got a chance to sit in the 255 yeah at the, at the west track uh, yeah. uh site at one. ddt yeah machines yeah yeah it looked it's, it looked i had a cat 239d um and i, lo- I loved my little 239 but um yellow machine sales brenton here I you know, go he, he, he's <laughs> the one who texted me i'm sorry mate yeah well, I was, actually, I think I spoke to him when I was there at DDT. Yeah, um, he's good. He's but good bloke. He's good. They're doing a, They're doing like a tour. West Track's doing like a tour. Is that what they were doing at, at your thing? They're doing like yeah. a, a a tour thing through. I don't know, like a trial thing for the two five fives on there. Brenton, yeah. are you going to go to the one at Bathurst? Because if you go, I'll, I'll I'll be there. I'm going to make it to that one. Ah, there you go, yeah. Brenton. You might have a sale. Can I get a commission for that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Send me the quote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I almost bought a two five nine. I wanted to upgrade to a two five nine back a few years ago. Um, I'll tell you what, the prices have gone up. They've gone up since I since I used to look at buying one. They've gone up heaps, but yeah, everything has. Yeah. 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 There you go. Brenton saying he'll be there. There you go. 
All right, uh-uh. we'll talk there. Looks like you're committed now. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time we speak, you'll be in your two five five driving around. Yeah, uh, that's all right. They're comfy, air rided, heated seat. That's all right. Bye no, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, they're nice, man. Nice machines. Um, I wouldn't mind testing one myself, actually, Brenton. I wouldn't mind testing one. Uh, I need to do a, re- a good review on one. He'll still be waiting. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> oh man. All right. So what, uh, what advice would you give to anyone that wants to start out on their own? So whether they've, uh, been in the machine or not, like what advice would you give to them if, if they were starting out? Um, definitely try and have some money behind you. Um, you, if you buy a brand new machine, you'll definitely need some money behind you, but, uh, you, you get need money for all sorts of other tools, um, whether to maintain your machine. I want to say I don't maintain my machine. I, I do do basic maintenance and I fix things when they break minor things, but you need all yeah. that. You've got to have, you know, you're going to need the two grand for the laser. You're going to need, you know, all that kind of stuff. You're going to need to be able to afford your account. You're going to be able to afford your insurances uh, and have a bit of money in the bank. Like I bought all my stuff secondhand uh, and, you know, I've had weeks where, you know, you, you go over the pits and you, you, you got transmission leaks and your you excavator breaks down in the middle of the road and you got to skull drag it off and yeah. you know, that's going to be expensive. So um, yeah, you, you got to have a bit of money. Definitely try and if you can have any money uh, just in the bank, that'd be, that'll really help you out. Just have a, you know, I've caught it close to the wire a few times and it's really been uh, tough, but uh, yeah. Um, if you can have a bit of money, uh, do your research as well um, on what machine you want to buy, um, what rates are going around. Um, if you if you are going to buy a brand new or second hand, uh, whatever you want to do is, t- t- you know, there's no right or wrong there. It's just what you prefer. Um, do your research. Do your research. Do your research. Yeah, uh, that'd be my biggest advice. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Though. And most guys that I've had on here say that. Yeah, do your research. Make sure you're happy with what you're going to get. What what sort of work you're going to get? What size machine do you need? All that yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, mm. yeah. Um, and I think one of the best bits of advice I can't remember who said it on your show, but um, when you do choose a machine, make sure it's the machine that you want because you know it's going to be your bum in it uh, when you're paying it off. So, yeah, make it sure. Or it's the one you want and yeah no cool cool no good advice thank you yeah. do you what about do you use social media like um i know i know you obviously you post on on instagram and that do you use that to advertise or how, how does that all work for you at the moment with, with social media uh well i don't have a website so i've just got instagram at the moment and um yeah that's that's I haven't I've been pretty slack. I haven't posted many of the really good things that I've done. Um, the, the skate park was probably the biggest thing, but I've done other really big high profile jobs uh, that I just haven't posted. <laughs> I'll need <laughs> to do some flashbacks when I post some of the really good jobs I've built. But um, yeah, yeah I, I I have I've never got a job out of Instagram, but it's cool to I, I want to build it up so I can just say oh you know. Uh, go to my Instagram or go to my website. You know that's my profile portfolio. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. That's what I uh, liked. Shane from TerraPro was saying that a lot. A lot of times he just posts things up, and then people just um, mm. can use that to see what he does. You know what I mean? So it gives them a bit of a perspective on the type of work he does. Yeah. Um, so I suppose it can be handy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Some of us might think we're not winning anything out of it, but by putting it out there, you might be just like refreshing people's memories about you, like saying, "Oh, yeah, that's right, we've got Alex. That's right, Alex can do this," and then we might call him. Yeah, uh, who knows? It might it might work. Yeah. Um, there you go. That, I, I found that a lot of guys used to, used to after I put a post up, I'd get a couple of phone calls or texts like, "Hey, man, what's your posi track doing next week?" Because you know, they they've seen me doing something with a posi track, you know? planting yeah. seeds, Pl- Terra Pro, that's planting exactly seeds. Right. Yeah. That's that's the stay, one. Man. Stay in the back of everyone's mind. That's it. That's it. They always remember. Oh, that's right. He's got a posse. That's why he's got a five. Yeah, exactly. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Um, so where 
Where do you see yourself? So I know you were talking about a five-year plan before. Where do you see yourself going in the next, you know, two to five years? Like, what's, what's the plan? Um, yeah, Just putting operators on, putting landscapers on, um, trying to diversify what I'm what I'm doing. I don't just want to be a uh, uh, um, just a wet hire guy um, doing alley. That like that. It's great work and it's bread and butter kind of stuff. But I, I you know, I really want to challenge myself and um, I've got that goal of you know I, I built this one park. It was twenty five acres. I spent two and a half years building it when I was working for this other company and. I pour my heart and soul to this place and my favorite thing is, you know, uh, taking people out there to show it off. So I built that and that's what I want to do, but have my name on it. Um, you know, to be proud of the work I do, uh, and be able to, you know, have people enjoy it. So that's, that's what I'm into. Yeah. That's what I want to be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, mean, I think that's awesome. It's awesome that you didn't just say to make more money because I think a lot you can hear a chopper. Sorry, guys. There's always choppers coming over here. We, we must be in a bad area. Uh, the police choppers are always hovering low here. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's good that you didn't, you didn't just say money because I think a lot of times guys say, oh, I just want to go, I want to grow and get the business going so I can make more money, put people on that. But what you're saying is you actually want to be able to challenge yourself change things a little bit so that you're not just, I suppose, in the, in the machine operating, you can actually be out um, challenging yourself, doing different things, and then you can see the finished products and say, I, I did this, I made that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's really good, man. Good to hear. Oh, it's great. Like, i have run into local skaters and go, and go oh, have you, heard of, have you ever been to this skate park? Oh, yeah, I built that. Go, oh, really? <laughs> have you done any others? Can you build this one? You know, can you do a half pipe in the backyard? Yes, yeah, sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, yeah. that, that, I've had a few of those. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome, man. Awesome. Um, so if listeners wanted to get in touch with you or potential customers want to get in touch with you on that, what is the best way to, to get in touch? Um, just Instagram at the moment. Um, I need to get my button gear and get myself a website. But... Uh, I haven't got anything like that yet. So just Instagram at the moment or, uh, yeah, just Instagram, I guess. Yeah. I, I need to post myself on, on your <laughs> website. I've been really slack. I, I've said, like, every time you're on a live, I keep on saying, oh, I need to join. But I really, <laughs> as soon as I get off this, I'm going to join. Yeah, yeah, good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. That's it. I always tell everyone, look, I, I can't guarantee anyone's going to get work out of it but i'm trying to build like a, cent- a central hub where everyone can just go to it and you know as soon as you think who am i going to use for this or i need a bobcat or a posi track or i need a formwork thing oh you go on earthworks hub right? so it'll, it'll grow you know it'll grow so do it man yeah definitely do it De- definitely do it <laughs> <laughs> that's it man that's it no and uh i do i really appreciate you coming on here is there anything else that you wanted to add? Is there something I haven't asked that you want to talk about? Or uh, you always ask this question, and I always have answers. But I'm drawing a blank again. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I love what you're doing. I love that there's a bit of a community uh, with the the uh, in the earth moving world, and it's not like you're, you're trying to branch it out and just include other people, like you know anyone in the civil kind of world. Yeah. Uh, construction world really uh, and I, I really respect that so uh, you know I'm stoked to be here and um, I really you know uh, everyone yeah it's really good having a community and it is a small community everyone talks but it's really good uh, when everyone gets along and helps each other and I think that's really good like you built that website to help each other so that people can help one another and yeah I think that's really good and you know a lot of other industries can probably take take note of that so yeah oh thanks very much man thank you no it's good good to hear man all right all right thank you very much for coming on man i know it was live so it's probably not as easy as uh doing it sort of you know, personal one-on-one no, um not... but we have it worked well man it worked good what do you think did it go all right oh, i was a bit nervous but i've got a few cans of good courage so i've been all right yeah. the same don't worry man same same <laughs> it's it's funny man i'm the one asking questions and i get nervous you know it's funny i always pace around before we start and thinking oh, oh. i don't want to say 
<laughs> I'm pouring in the morning and I didn't leave sight till like seven o'clock and I, I was in the bogey and I raced home and I, I walked in like 10 minutes before it started. I didn't have a chance to read anything and I set up, I had to set up my phone and everything so I could see this. And I was like, oh, I'm not prepared at all. I just, oh, you'll be all right. Just wing it. See how you go. Uh, you know what, man? Sometimes, and this is what I tell a lot of people that it's better when we just do it just, you know, off the cuff because if we try and rehearse things and, and, uh, and do, do things, um, like properly and read questions and that, it's just, it doesn't work out always. Sometimes it sounds too, to rehearse, it's actually the best like this, man. We just talk it out. Yeah, it is what it is, you know. Well, so. we're only, yeah, we're only people, you know. We're just people in the in the game and having fun. So, yeah, that's you know what, more. that's exactly right, man. And that's what this industry has taught me because I came from the corporate world. Um, so same thing. I went to uni, did a business management degree, worked for eleven years in the corporate world, and everything had to be by the book you had to be professional talk a certain way you know all these things and it was like constant pressure like apart from the job you, you got all these other side things that you got to look out for mm. whereas as soon as i started in earthworks i was like first day on site people are swearing calling each other eat the care this and i was like what the hell is this you know when we were coming <laughs> on site i came onto a site and i said oh where do i go and he goes i'll go see that dickhead over there and i was like what <laughs> Did you just say that? <laughs> and then I was like, we, we never used to swear in the office, you know, but uh, it's just a different thing. Everyone just says it as it is. And, I, and I've learned to adapt to that now. So yeah. Yeah. I, th I think like you say, we're just people, man. I've come to learn we're just people. We're just, everyone's different. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. No, nah, cool, man. Cool. Thank you very much for joining me and to all the listeners as well. Thanks for joining. Um, I know, like I said, this was a bit of an ad hoc thing. But um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Alex, I wish you all the best with the business and we'll keep in touch and make sure you go in and uh, sign in to uh, uh, list yourself on uh, Earthworks Hub. No, and every, everybody else as well, man. If you haven't listed yourself on there, go in, uh, even register yourself on, online uh, with, with earthworkshub.com.au and listen in. This will be posted up um, probably this week sometime. So if you missed it or you wanted to go back and hear something, you can always go on. So I'm on YouTube, Spotify, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, I don't know, you name it, Earthworks Hub is on it. So uh, make sure you listen in. Thank you very much for joining us. Alex, thanks again, mate. Thanks for having me, mate. Appreciate it. No problem. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Bye-bye.